Okay, I'm sorry about the delay. So I'm Zhong Wei Li from Dr. Belmonte's lab. He cannot make it today, so I will substitute him to give the talk. So first of all, uh, I, w I want to uh, thank Tracy to give a very good uh, background introduction to the kidney development. And uh, also I want to express my uh, appreciation to the scientists like Tracy and Dr. McMahon. Their studies in the basic uh, <coughs> kidney development lays the basis for my study. So today my topic is about the, <coughs> uh, is about the development of a novel technological platform to expand both mouse and human progenic, uh, progenitor cells and also the wide applications of these progenitor cells. So um, nephron progenitor cells um, are condensed mesenchyme states in, their, uh, in, in vivo. So um, I was thinking uh, to mimic this in vivo uh, aggregated state. So I, I, I employed the 3D aggregate culture condition uh, to screen the different, uh, the optimal culture media. Uh, based on this idea, I div uh, devised this uh, screening platform. So uh, first I chose the 6.2 GFP mouse embryos uh, to, um, uh, for uh, better um, observation. Uh, 6.2 GFP uh, strain is also generated by Dr. McMahon's lab. And he also demonstrated that 6.2 is a, a marker gene that labels the uh, nephron progenitor cells. So what I did was uh, to dissociate the uh, E13.5 day uh, uh, embryonic kidneys, and then using facts to uh, purify 62 GFP positive cells, and then put them into low attachment 96 well plates to form aggregates. At this stage, I uh, try different combinations of, of growth factors and small molecules, and the uh, condition can support good viability, good growth, and good GFP expression of 62. Uh, through several rounds of screening and optimization, finally, I obtained a good. Uh, MPSR media, meaning uh, M left from progenitor cell filial media. So under this MPSR 3D culture condition, the MPCs can grow very happily and very stably. So uh, actually they can grow also very quickly. So starting from 3,000 cells per aggregate, they can grow to 100,000 cells per aggregate within four to five days. And if we look at the gene expression of these cells, we can see that they express very homogeneously the MPC marker genes, including 62 SAR1 and cited one. And uh, using this uh, MPSR 3D culture cognition, we can also uh, derive MPC9s from other development stages and with 100% uh, successful rate. So next, we want to know how similar the culture, the long-term expanded MPC9s are similar to the uh, in vivo uh, primary cells. So we um, did RNA sequencing using uh, low passage MPC9s and long-term uh, long passage MPC9s and compared them with uh, freshly isolated primary cells from the embryos. As you can see from the PCA analysis, uh, early MPCs from E11.5 to E13.5, they are uh, clustered together and they are very similar. But uh, after 13 uh, uh, 16.5 days, uh, they are quite different. Interestingly, all the MPC9s, regardless of which stage they were derived from, they cluster together, and they are very similar to early stage MPCs, as shown in the PC1 and PC3 axis. So the important question is, can the long-term cultured um, nephron organoid, um, no, uh, long-term cultured MPC9s differentiate nephrons? That's the most important thing. So we used uh, a well-established uh, uh, assay that is spinal cord induction assay. We put the, uh, the aggregates of MPC next to the spinal cord. And after seven days, we observed the formation of numerous tubular structures. And if we did uh, do the staining, we can see that uh, it has uh, most of the, the major parts of the nephrons, including podocalyxin labeled uh, glomerulus, LTL labeled uh, proximal tubules, and CDH1 labeled distal tubules or loop of Henry structures. More impressively, even after 90 or 100 passages, uh, that is more than one year, and billions of billions fold of uh, expansion, these cultured M uh, MPC uh, can still differentiate very efficiently to the nephrons. Another feature, as mentioned by Tracy just now, is that um, 
the NPCs can uh, lead to interact with UB progenitor cells to initiate the nephron genesis. So to mimic the, uh, to, to, to see if the cultured NPCs still retain this feature, we designed this complementary reaggregation assay. So when the kidney cells were dissociated, we removed the 6-2 GFP-positive cells, the nephron progenitor cells, and we replaced them with m cherry labeled long-term cultured NPCs. And then we mixed them together and uh, put them on air liquid interface to see if they can restore the nephron genesis. What we observed morphologically is that there's no difference from the mixture between 6-2 GFP-negative cells with cultured NPCs and 6-2 GFP-negative cells with primary cells. And importantly, on day two of this uh, reaggregation, we can see that uh, m cherry labeled NPCs uh, self-organized to form this cap structure surrounding the CK8 positive UB progenitor cells. So this actually is very, very similar to what Tracy just showed in the in vivo situation. And uh, consistently, after seven days, we observed a lot of nephrons formed from m cherry labeled cells. And also based on the basic studies of kidney development, we established a good protocol to differentiate from cultured NPCs to nephron organoids. And uh, in this protocol, we first need to prime the cultured NPCs with uh, wind signaling and FGF signaling. And then at this stage, the cell fate is more or less specified uh, because at this stage, the fate specified NPCs can spontaneously differentiate to nephron organoids and uh, without um, extra, um, exogenously added growth vectors or small molecules. And importantly, at this stage, uh, they express high expression of uh, LIM1 and PAX8. This is also consistent with what we saw in the kidney development. And also, when we uh, inhibit large signaling from day two to day, five, uh, day seven, um, we found that the differentiation to proximal tubules and to the granulars were severely damaged. This is also consistent with the kidney development. So this, uh, this results suggested that this in vitro differentiation platform could be useful to the study of kidney development. And in pharmaceutical industry, uh, the, the drugs of nephron toxicity is a big concern. So we thought that uh, and now in the companies, they usually use uh, monolayer uh, kidney, uh, immortalized kidney cell lines to evaluate um, drug toxicity. And we thought that the 3D organoid might be much more uh, like the physi physiological situations. So uh, we applied gentamicin to the nephron organoid when generated and then counted the caspase 3 positive apoptotic cells generated by, uh, 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 triggered by gentamicin. And, and uh, consistent with the in vivo situation, we found that the gentamicin specifically targeted and damaged proximal tubules, but not the granular structures. And also, the long-term stable expansion of MPCs is suitable for uh, gene editing and uh, make new disease models. To provide proof of concept, we used CRISPR-Cas9 system to the uh, MPC lines and to try to lock out MPHS1 gene. That is um, a critical factor in the podocytes. So uh, as you can see that uh, targeting efficiency is very good with more than 90% targeting. And uh, if we look at the biolelic mutations, it's more than 80%. And when we selected one clone from these uh, gene targeting uh, 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 clones, with, uh, after we differentiate them to nephron organoids, we can see that uh, uh, MPHS1 gene was not expressed, suggesting the successful gene knockout. And so next we asked, what can we do use, uh, with these uh, long-term cultured large quantities of cells in vivo? So first of all, we need to demonstrate that these cells actually have nephrogenic potential in vivo. So what we did was to transplant, uh, uh, inject the M cherry labeled fit specified NPCs to the neonatal mouse kidneys. And after seven days, we can see that the M cherry cells uh, formed a lot of tubular structures. If we look at it in details, you can see that um, they form actually chimeric uh, nephron structures with uh, the host kidney cells. And also in some cases, they form uh, renal tubules by themselves. 
In another experiment, we transplanted the cultured NPC aggregate to the early embryo of the chick. And after seven days, we observed uh, one uh, aggregate full of tubular structures. And uh, when we did the uh, whole mountain immunostiny, we saw a very beautiful uh, nephron structure, segmented nephron structure with uh, 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 glomerulus corrected to proximal tubules and then corrected to distal tubules. So what we did next is to see uh, uh, if we can get some kidney-like structures if we transplant the, these cells in, in, vitro, in vivo. So we trans, uh, transplanted uh, the aggregates uh, to the omitin of the mice, NSG mice, and after three weeks, we found that very interestingly, a lot of cyst structures in the omitin surrounded by blood vessels, and the m cherry positive cells are located surrounding these cysts. And these m cherry cells were found to differentiate to left ones and more importantly, we found that in the glomerular structure formed from m cherry positive cells, uh, that is uh, positive for WT1, uh, we see that m cherry negative CD31 positive uh, cells, that is blood vessels from the host, in, uh, were integrated to the glomerular structures. More interestingly, when we injected Lucifer yellow uh, labeled uh, the dextran dyes, uh, to the mouse tail vein. After two hours, we can observe these dyes entering the, the, the cysts. And uh, uh, more importantly, if we, uh, we, we also detected the, the high level of creatinine in the cyst fluid. So this data taken together suggested that uh, the cultured NPCs um, upon transplantation to the uh, in vivo situation they, might, they may have formed functional nephrons with filtration abilities. We also tested uh, if uh, the large quantities of NPCs could be used for, for cell therapy. So what we did was uh, we chose uh, cisplatin-induced acute kidney injury models, and we see that uh, the mice transplanted with uh, fit-specified NPCs could survive better, and the kidney functions seem to be improved. Uh, as, as evidenced by BUN and the creatinine levels and also the histology of kidneys. But interestingly, these cells, after transplantation to the kidney subcapsule, they stayed on the outer layer of the, uh, of the kidney cortex, but they could not integrate inside of the kidney. To re so, the, uh, so this reminded us maybe the paracrine effect could contribute to the therapeutic effect to prove this we collected the conditioned media from the NPC culture and then uh, injected this conditioned media to the cisplatin AKI mouse models. And we found that the, the uh, therapeutic effect is more or less the same as uh, NPC transplantation. So this suggests that paracrine effect might be important. And right now we are trying to identify what factors are in the conditioned media that could have this renal protective effect. Uh, finally, um, we try to apply this uh, technique to the culture of human nephron progenitor cells. We isolated the um, uh, human progenitor cells by, uh, we enriched them from some surface markers and then formed the aggregates. And then we modified the culture media uh, based on the mouse MPSR condition media. We found that the dual inhibition of SMAT, SMAT signaling pathway could uh, enhance the culture of human NPCs. Under this condition, human NPCs can grow very happily and they can, uh, uh, they have very homogeneous expression of NPC marker genes. And more importantly, they can differentiate to uh, human nephron organoids in vitro and in vivo upon transplantation to the omitin. So taken together, uh, uh, we established a good platform to expand mouse and human nephron progenitor cells using 3D culture and uh, this uh, these aggregates, 3D aggregates, can differentiate efficiently to nephron organoids, and these platforms are very useful for studying kidney development, toxicity testing, disease modeling, drug screening, and cell therapy. Another take-home message, I think, is that the uh, 3D culture platform might also be useful for expansion of other progenitor cells that are uh, condensed mesenchyme in their relative state. So I would like to thank my uh, uh, advisor, Dr. Juan Carlos, uh, is Bishop Abel Monkey, and also my collaborators, Jun and Toshi. 
um, and uh, all the lab members. I think the collaborative environment in the lab is a key to the success of the project. Thank you very much, and I would like to take questions. Um, yes, my question is kind of, a, again, another kind of um, long-term one. Um, so it looks like you can uh, make these mini uh, nephrons, these kid mini kidneys. But one of the problems with all of the approaches to make human organs in animals is that the blood vessels come from the animal. And so if you were to transplant those organs back to a human, you would have a, a, a graft versus host reaction, right? Yes. So I was just wondering if you've tried in vitro to add some kind of endothelial cell or precursor to try to get a more complex structure? Yes, very good question. So my long-term goal is that um, I will use the uh, expansion technology to expand other progenitor cells, such as the UB progenitor, uh, stroma progenitor, and the, maybe the endothelial progenitor cells, and then mix them together by engineering ways to make a kidney prot prototype and then do the transplantation. Thank you. A very nice work, um, Rob Kressler, San Diego Blood Bank. Um, one minor question on your in vivo study, your acute kidney injury model, you showed a clear and strong survival benefit there. Is it cell, cell type specific? Did you run another cell control like a mesenchymal stem cell control? Actually, well? uh, I, I, the control I used was uh, mouse embryonic stem cells. I didn't try MSCs. Okay. Yes, okay. and you. they didn't have therapeutic effect. I, I have a question. So you mentioned that you were able to pass those cells for several passages and they are still quite stable. Yes. Um, did you actually check genetic, uh, genomic oh, yes. instability as well? Yes, we did uh, genotyping. Oh, no, <laughs> karyotyping. Okay, yeah. and they, they yes. look good. Yes, yeah. in, after 60 passages. Yeah, okay. it looks pretty good. Okay. okay. All right, you see, uh, there is no more questions. I think we can break now for a cough break and posters outside. Thank you all. Thank the speakers. Thank you.